Hey guys, welcome to the podcast 1017. And today I have a special guest. His name is Samer Hosen. He's the director of corporate marketing at M Trust Financial. So guys, please give a warm welcome to Samer. He's going to tell us some important things about corporate and what we need to know about and how we can make a difference at the same time get noticed. So Samer, please start off by telling us a little bit about you and how you got started in this whole world. Sure. Uh, thank you for having me first off. And I'm excited to talk about this because I think that I have a kind of unique story, but I think unique stories on how you find work in today's economy, today's world, especially for people our age, they're all unique experiences. Um, so I actually uh, went to the University of California, Santa Cruz, and studied environmental science. Mm. Uh, did that for four years and then moved to New York to go to grad school here. And I started noticing, and I think this is very important, my job market when the Senate flipped, you know, towards the end of Obama, mm -hmm. wasn't looking good for environmentalists. So mm -hmm. I noticed people in my field losing jobs or getting pay cuts, salaries. So I said, okay, I don't want to go into that job market. And there's a lot of industries where where you started in college may mm -hmm. not be in the same position when you leave university. Right. So I kind of saw that and was like, okay, I still have a passion for environmental science. So I did a master's in that and then coupled it with a business degree because I was like, I, I need a backup plan. Um, so once I graduated, uh, I had already been working in a marketing agency just, you know, to have something to do while I was here. Right. And I started realizing that I was really good at marketing. Um, I was excelling in the agency I was working on. And so I, stayed at that for a little bit, um, moved around to like smaller companies, but I felt like I, you know, everyone I knew was on the job train and they were moving about it freely, but getting on that train was very difficult for me and I learned a very important lesson. Get a big name on your resume early on because the truth of the matter is the larger the name, the less the salary is often gonna be unless you know you're an exec. Um, but once, if you don't have something recognizable on your resume, every time you apply for a job, HR has a 90% chance of not looking up where you work because they just don't right. recognize it. But if you have a Fortune 500 company on it, they assume that their HR did the hard work for them. Mm -hmm. And so I decided, you know, I need something recognizable. And I found a position here at Amtrust Financial, which is a Fortune 500 multinational insurance carrier. Um, and I started doing marketing and, uh, you know, kind of coupled it with my passion of environmentalism, where I'm right now spearheading the Go Green program. Oh. helping digitize uh, most of our documents that our agents and insureds um, have, because we're an antiquated industry in general, mm. um, they've been receiving in the mail. So hopefully in the next actually month, we're eliminating about two truckloads of paper every month from just our corporation. Look at you. So you knew how to combine what you learned in your passion, right? Environmental science and put it into business. That's phenomenal. Most people would give up on that. And I think that's, uh, pretty innovative of you to be incorporating it into your um, corporate company. That's awesome. Well, the truth of the matter is corporate jobs are not for everyone, but they're for a lot of people and no one is passionately driven to work in corporate. You know, we're not nurses, right. we're not teachers, we're not firefighters. Those are all passion driven. Right. And you know, coming from Lebanese background, uh, we're not pushed to go into corporate. We are pushed yeah. to become, you know, one of the, cliche jobs of our culture. Lawyers, so, doctors, yeah. Yeah, lawyers, doctors, engineers, you know, something flashy. So I had to incorporate my dream into my reality. And that was, I work corporate, I have a passion for this, and how do I couple the two? And it seems like most importantly, you, you work for a corporate company that's um, open-minded to your innovative ideas. I think that's, that's something that's also brings in, brings in a lot of value for you. I'm, I'm assuming because when you do work for someone and they don't necessarily are, they're not really necessarily open to their employees ideas. That makes it really difficult for you to not only um, grow in the company, but also just bring in some of your creativity. So to see that they're open about that, that's pretty good. That's amazing. Yeah. And Half of it is that they're open to innovation and ideas, but the other half of it, when it comes to corporate, I'm 
only been here for three years and 27 days. It's not like I've been here forever. Right. They are just more open to me and my ideas. And that's something, mm. you know, if I had to tell someone and thinking about going into corporation, I would start with, you know, everyone in our generation is enticed by a startup. And I've worked in startups yes. um, and I'm starting at the beginning here of the corporate world. No, no, it's good. I don't find like, you know, startups are for everyone because typically they are made by investors for investors. And if it works for you, especially if you're in IT, that's great. But from my experience, you know, they'll say, hey, we have a keg in the corner. We have hammocks and a ping pong table, but you're going to work a 70 hour week. Yeah, so that's an issue. You're going to get paid 35 grand out of, you know, four year college. And they do this very, very precarious thing where they say you have unlimited vacation days. Unlimited vacation days means every time you ask for a vacation, they're going to say no. Whereas corporate, you know, everything is very structured, which I personally needed where I have X amount of vacation days. I have these holidays and I have these working hours in this HR department and these rules and regulations. So for me personally, that worked. And for some people, they don't like that. But I think for a lot of people, especially when you're entering the job market and mm -hmm. you're vulnerable to exploitation, mm -hmm. go for a big name corporation that's going to, you know, have a structure that you don't have to navigate because it's very difficult to stand up for yourself early in your career. And obviously there's cases with negotiating salaries and how you're treated at a corporation. But in my experience, it's a lot easier to navigate early in your career, especially when you're surrounded by a lot more people in your same position. I like that you, you brought this up because so many people are like, I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to be a part of a company that's just starting so I can work up from, from ground up and become something with them, right? So many people are so into that, and especially in our generation, but little do they understand how much dedication and hard work requires to even be a part of something like that. Like for me, I have my own company, and so just when I hear people like, oh, I want to be part of a startup, I'm like, you don't even know <laughs> what goes down. <laughs> And sometimes you'll get paid, sometimes you won't. Sometimes you'll deal with this. Sometimes, I mean, especially if you're in a position of leadership, right, and you run the company, it's very difficult. And then to have, you know, other people working for you as well, um, you, some people don't like that. Some people don't like the spontaneous and the inconsistency and the, the times of high and the times of low. Like, you know, it's, not, it's, not some, it's just not within their personality or lifestyle that they want, right? So just having like an honest conversation with yourself and just asking what kind of lifestyle do I want and how do I, how do I want it to look like in a sense day to day and then go from there when it comes to your career because with your career, sometimes that doesn't offer that, uh, you know, that, that, that look for you and that, and that life that you want to live, right? So the fact that you're really self-aware and understand like, no, this is the lifestyle I want. I like the structure. I like the dedicated uh, vacation days. I like this. I like to know that I'm coming to work from this time to this time and I'm not working 80 hours a week. I'm getting paid this much. It's not going to change, you know? So it's, it's very important you brought that up because I think a lot of people need to hear that and just kind of have a talk with themselves. Yeah. And a lot of that came from not only um, just experiencing a startup and a small company and a corporation with, you know, 10,000 employees plus, mm -hmm. um, but also when I was looking for a job and there was a huge gap, a very demoralizing gap from graduation day, mm -hmm to 100 plus applications a day to finding this job. It was a long stretch, but the way I kind of figured what I wanted to do was mm -hmm. only through networking. I, and some people may disagree, unless you went to Ivy League or, you know, like the UCLA's, the Stanford's of the world, those types right. of schools, your application, because I know this from our end, mm -hmm. um, is one of five, 600 applications for an entry level position. Right. So unless you have any connection to that position through networking, it's, it's near impossible to get that job. And aside from, you know, getting help and, you know, recommendations, I was talking to so many people when I was looking for work that I kind of was checking, all right, I don't want this, I don't want that, because hopefully you find people that are honest and just say, I hate my job, mm. I don't wanna do this. Right. Um, you know, I love this aspect of my job, I like working at this company for that. And then you can start to hone in on what you're actually looking for, because if you're just sending out applications that pseudo match what you're looking for, or in a city you like, or a salary you want, you're gonna burn out because you can only fake it to yourself that you want that position for so long. So I would highly recommend doing as much research through 
networking before you even go down that road. Right. I love that. That's very important. Now talk to me about, talk to me about some things that you've done. Cause you've mentioned how you were able to bring on some environmental friendly options for your company in order to um, just be environmental friendly. Right. So talk to me about how, what are the do's in corporate and like, how can you, how can you kind of voice your opinion on certain things and also just stand up for yourself? What are, what are the do's and don'ts with that? And we'll start with that one. What are the do's and don'ts when you want to basically state some opinions and maybe try to innovate something? Sure. Um, this was a weird world for me. I never thought I was going to be working on Wall Street in a thousand years. Yeah. Uh, the median age of my company is like 50 and I was 25, 26 years old. Uh, mm -hmm. like brown guy on the floor type of thing. <laughs> and I was, you know, unemployed to traveling on private transportation with, you know, the CEO at some point within two weeks. So I had to learn very quickly because there are a lot of do's and don'ts in corporate. Um, and it's basically comes down to, it's not an intimidation thing. It's that they have to run. So you kind of have to fall into formation so that they work correctly. Mm -hmm. um, and some of the do's and don'ts, when you first start your job, there is a fine line between proving yourself and being a know-it-all. So proving yourself means double checking your own work, asking questions, learning quickly, not being told something twice, but owning up to your mistakes, which makes mm -hmm. you not a know-it-all. And when you don't ask questions, no one appreciates that because you're not going to ever enter a door and know everything. Um, and I just see it with people here where they just keep referencing the last job they had and what they did at their last job. And it's not really relevant to what we do here. So I think the minute you go in, as long as you look like you're absorbing information and aggregating it from your experience around you, I think that's one of the most important things, but also um, in terms of protecting yourself in a corporation, as I always say, you know, if your boss emails you outside of business hours, you're new, you know, start responding, but don't make it a habit. Mm -hmm. Same thing goes with, if you have work to do, stay late if you need to, but also be careful not to make it such a habit that the one day you leave at 5.30, everyone's like, where are you going? Mm, I like that. And that even goes with vacation days. I have a lot of friends who are afraid to take vacation days, even though they're like on the books PTO. And then all of a sudden, when you try to start va taking vacation days, everyone's relying on you being there all the time. So that's mm. an important thing about navigating company culture and corporations is don't be too far of anything. Don't be the doormat and don't be the person who knows it all and is kind of loose with how they treat corporations. Another important thing is make personal connections. You know, there's that whole joke, corporations are people. I don't know about that, but the people within corporations are people. Right. And when you're at lunch, don't vent, don't complain about work because Everything spreads like wildfire and then you just become associated with negative. Take that time to make real connections with your colleagues. And that's also a protective thing because when it comes to, especially in corporate where how is this person doing and they take it into account for reviews or if they're even going to keep you or not. If you have that personal connection, you're protecting yourself. Mm. I love that. It's, it's, you're really teaching someone how to stick up for themselves and really know how to um, exceed in the, in the environment that you're in when it comes to corporate. So that's, that's phenomenal. I love that advice. I know now, I want to ask a little bit more, but I know I want to make sure not to forget Joe's questions. So if Joe's listening, he's probably gonna be really happy because he really wanted to ask you specific things. So uh, the first question is, can you talk a little bit about competition versus corporation within a team? Sorry, competition between co cooperation with the team. Sorry, totally read that one wrong. So one thing of advice in terms of competitiveness is if you want to see if you're being pinned against someone else, right. and most of the time, corporate, unless you're working for a huge 100,000 person corporation, you have your niche and you have your position. Mm. When you stop receiving work or assignments or tasks, start to worry. You know, I, I see a lot of friends who are like, oh, my job's easy, my job's easy. Look at the person who has a similar job to you. Are they getting twice as much work as you? 
that's a huge sign. And the truth of the matter is people, and this is just from my experience, bosses will put you up against someone similar, but they're not really pinning you because they're not gonna double the other person's workload and get rid of you. Mm. So I think the best thing to do is always prove teamwork because they no manager wants or director wants a good team member. They want a good team. So I think the best thing to do is just make sure that you are always communicating and make sure that it's obvious that you're trying to make sure everyone succeeds rather than it, it becomes very obvious in corporations when people are trying to compete where mm -hmm. they, you know, exclude people from emails when they over talk at meetings, when they want their name on everything, when they take credit for things, except blame that becomes extremely redundant. And then you start to realize that this person's in it for themselves and the directors just want everyone to work together. So it'll really bite you if you become overly competitive to the point where it's very obvious. So then what would you do in a situation when someone is clearly taking, uh, taking um, recognition for the work that you and, or maybe someone else in the team have all done and they're not really including you guys in it? How do you handle that? I mean, clearly I know that, you know, going to the boss about it all the time is not necessarily good cho a good idea, but how do you handle that other person in the most professional way? If you have a good boss, like the bosses I've had here, they will go to the CEO, will present something, and they'll say, Samer did all that. We were just here. Mm. If you have a bad boss, they're going to say, my department or I did this. You can't do anything about it. And the truth of the matter is, the execs aren't the one deciding your salary. It's your direct boss. So don't get too wrapped up in that. But well, most, most are, oh, go ahead. I guess you're going to answer it. Oh, yeah. But if it's someone at your level or yeah. someone, you know, similar in your level who is taking credit for your work, if you give them that opportunity, if you're so in the background, mm -hmm. that's kind of on you because you kind of open that door for them because all of a sudden they're associated with the project. You need to speak up at meetings. You need to check in with your boss and say, here's where we are. Just wanted to let you know. Mm -hmm. uh, here's what I'm working on. Always stay in communication and always stay at the front of that. When you fade in the back, that's kind of just your own fault. Right. So really just sticking up for yourself in the beginning before it you know, prolongs any longer, basically. Yeah. And again, just proving yourself and not being grandstandy about it. It's not like, look what I did today. Hey, I just wanted to let you know we accomplished this this week and we're expecting it to deliver on time, just wanted to keep you in the loop. Mm. And all of a sudden, who can take credit for something that you're obviously working on? Right. I like it. It's a good answer. All right. Let's ask the next question he has. Um, how to interact and build a relationship with your manager? So, yeah, his question is basically, how are you able to build a stronger relationship and really speak, you know, communicate with your manager in a professional way, but at the same time, build that relationship, if that makes sense, in a company? I would say just be someone that they depend on because obviously I can talk up a storm. <laughs> I work in marketing. I can BS my way through anything. I can yeah. nod a smile. Cool. They're not looking for a best friend. They're not looking for an assistant. But right. when you become someone they can depend on, that is because execs are extremely busy. Managers are extremely busy. And once you take something off their plate, Mm -hmm. I've seen people with horrible attitudes, with horrible work ethics, who get in at like 11, leave whenever they want, take a ton of vacations, but they get their stuff done and their managers can depend on them. And they're typically the favorite because that's all that matters. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say the best thing to do is as long as your boss is giving you work, you know, do it. That's mm -hmm. great. But always ask as a reference point could i be doing more especially in the beginning although it seems like you know self-deprecating all you're saying to your boss is you know give me advice because i know i'm not perfect mm. and i think that's how you build a strong relationship is when they start feeling like they're able to like mold and mentor you mm -hmm. and they do have an ego so when you start to like take their advice and obviously cross-reference it and make sure it's worthwhile advice. But when they start seeing you as like their little prodigy, <laughs> that's the closest relationship they have because they're managers. Right. 
just showing you care it sounds like really just care about the job care about them care about really the, the relationship between you guys as well yeah and caring that you're improving because you shouldn't be the same employee they had day one as you are six months in one year in. right right I love it. Now, this is my last, last question from Joe's side. Um, and it's actually my favorite question. I, I like this one. He says, how do you disagree yet remain respectful within your team and within your executives as well? Um, never say no, or mm-hmm. I don't like this. It's what pisses me off most about friends. Hey, do you want to go to Chinese? No. Do you want to go to pizza? No. <laughs> What do you want? (laughs) Supplement every disagreement with an alternative. Mm. So if you say, you know, I don't like the direction of this marketing campaign we're doing, that's not the end of your sentence. It's, I think uh, we could also try and then present it at the same caliber and thought and organization as the thing you're disagreeing with. Because if you just say no, then you're just basically telling someone to start over and no one's going to do that. Right. Um, So I think that's the best way to disagree. The other thing is, unless you're working on commission and unless it's like a fundamentally wrong thing that you think is like going to collapse your department, who cares? Just let them do what they want. You know, there is a certain amount of conceding when you work in groups that you have to get used to doing. I don't love half of the things that my you know creative team decides on but I sometimes I'm like that's just a matter of opinion and I'm not gonna kick and scream or make other people's life hell because of my opinion so you have to present alternatives and concede sometimes so it's like pick your own choose your own battles basically that you can you can fight yeah and you'll start to realize what's important to fight about because I see people come into corporations and they come from a place of no and they question everything mm. and brought out the process. Everyone hates that person because they're not they're, providing solutions. They're not providing solutions and they're just providing double the work. And the, right. the amount of resentment those types of people get is astonishing and rightfully so. So mm. yeah, quit, learn how to choose your battles. Mm. I like that. That's really smart. I think that's a perfect advice, especially in the corporate world when you're dealing with so many different types of people. So my next question for you is this, and I may be deviating away from a little bit about the, the advice taking from corporate side, but I'm kind of curious, when you first started working, you said you were in your 20s, 26, I think, when you first started with this company, but, you know, getting in there. Um, what were your fears walking into corporate? Um, first off, that I wasn't good enough because it is intimidating. I went to a bunch of hippie schools uh, I'd never worn a suit, you know, right. again, median age. I didn't look like anyone else. I didn't talk like anyone else. And actually that was one of the biggest fears I had is that they all have their own language and I seem so foreign. And that was one thing I quickly picked up when I was in the finance world is just buzzwords, you know, jargon. Just, yeah. because it was intimidating to not understand half of the things that they were saying. Yeah. Um, And then also I was afraid of being exploited because you hear of all those stories where people are at their desks till you know, 9.30 at night and then they're in at eight in the morning. I I just don't personally have that work ethic. So that was a fear of mine. Um, Yeah, so that was basically it, just feeling overworked and just like I didn't belong. So then how did you handle some of those problems, those, those fears that you were, you know, that you were feeling when you walked into this world? What did you do? What steps like were you like that you did outside of work or at work? If someone else was feeling the same way too, that you could give advice on. A lot of listening. And I would ask uh, my boss at the time, can I sit in on meetings? Mm -hmm. And even if they were just phone calls, Hey, can I dial in? Mm -hmm. And I just love that. And I was literally just taking notes. I work in uh, insurance and I worked on the finance side of things at one point in insurance. There are a thousand acronyms for different kinds of policies, different kinds of coverages, different documents that we send out. And I would literally just sit there and write them down for hours on end on calls and just rather ask someone at work when they had time or I would just Google everything. And honestly, you can look up like, if you work in fashion, fashion lingo. If you work in finance, fa- you know, finance yeah. lingo. You have to look up that stuff because 
people will talk to you very quickly because they have to, and you have to respond how they're talking. Um, mm -hmm. It's 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 just mandatory. So really, really studying what you're getting involved in, right? Really understanding the company's values, studying their jargon, starting studying what and how things work in, in the job environment so you can be well, well prepared. And that, I think that's what, what you're basically saying is to help you with the fears along the way. Yeah, and you have to understand that corporations and companies have culture because cultures help keep things cozy yeah. and moving. Mm -hmm. Countries have cultures that that's what they're intended for. Same thing with companies. So it seems like they're trying to strip you away of your identity. No, it's that they're trying to like keep things cohesive. So you have to know how they talk. You have to know you know, are they getting after work drinks? Okay, I don't want to hang out with these people. Do you know how many business discussions get done at extracurricular activities? Right. Down to how do, you know, they interact with each other. That's a part of culture. How do they dress? Mm -hmm. It seems like, you know, a sellout thing. And I know I'm wearing like a polo shirt right now, but <laughs> if you're going into a meeting and you look different, unfortunately, right. you're standing out. And there's a good way to stand out and then there's just standing out. Mm. So it's like really playing their game with their rules, but knowing how to win it, win inside that as well. Kind of understanding that path. Yeah. But I, again, I don't want to call it a game because game makes yeah. it seems like, you know, like last Yeah. Okay. Game standard. is probably a bad way of this yeah. using as it, but you get the gist of what I'm trying to say, basically. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Awesome. And so I guess my next question is, would you see yourself growing in a corporation like this and hopefully getting an executive position or starting something on your own? I don't think I have it in me to start my own company. Um, I'm, and what's funny is people always say like, I'm very free spirited. I'm like a SoCal beach boy. What are you doing in a stuffy corporation in Manhattan? Because the rest of my life, I like to keep very loose and, you know, on the you know off the whim and spontaneous i don't want that in my work life right, right. and you know when you work in a corporation i have like 38 vacation days a year yeah. whereas if i had my own company then god bless you for doing it like it's hard. you can take it when you can but it's not guaranteed mm -hmm. and so being spontaneous on my own would be a lot more difficult and i know the dream is i'm my own boss but there is so much work that goes to you being your own boss right. that I just feel like I'm very comfortable. And one very important thing that I tell everyone when they're starting their job, if you start your job on a Monday and you hate it the following Friday, start looking for a new job. Hmm. Any corporation will fire you tomorrow for right. the smallest thing down to it's Q2, they ran the numbers, their stock is down, you're out of there. They wow. don't care if you're living on the street. Mm -hmm. Why are you more loyal to them than they will ever be to you? Right. So I say that by saying, always look at your trajectory. If you see that they're only hiring, because the staff in the corporations, does everyone who's an exec look the same? Are they all 20, 30 years older than you? Do they all know each other? Mm -hmm. Moral of the story is, are you ever going to get to that job? Yes, no. If that's a no, start looking for a new job. If mm -hmm. you have a ceiling on you, take it for what it is, but keep looking. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like at this company I have a ceiling that's low at all, and there's a trajectory and potential here, so I personally don't see myself going anywhere anytime soon. Oh, good. That's great advice. Thank you. So one last final question, because I know you probably finished, you have a lunch break you want to take. Um, what's one truth you found to be true on your journey um, when, while trying to find a job in the, in the corporate world that you could share with everyone else? One truth is, and I think I alluded to it in the beginning, mm -hmm. you don't know anyone in that corporation unless Harvard is plastered on the top of your resume, you might as well not hit send. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying you need to have a personal connection to it, but you need to have some sort of connection. Offer, go on LinkedIn, pay for the premium where you can in-mail 10 people for like $10 or something. Reach out to them and humbly say, I'm starting my journey. I'm inspired by your resume. May I please take you out to lunch? Mm -hmm. And 
why does it suck that the you know person with student loan debt is taking someone with a job out to lunch? But that's the truth of the matter is. And do that as many times as possible. Most people will take you up on that. And once you build, even if it's just a connection over lunch, they will recommend you if they feel like it's not gonna hurt their reputation. And that's the biggest truth is that you need to make a connection to that corporation before you hit send mm. because you might as well just not apply because again if we're getting 600 and we're not the biggest company in the world i assume those people wanting to work at google conservatively 5,000 applications it's not a lottery they're taking everyone who is referred and not really looking at anything else right i like that so it's really just knowing somebody and also just having a really great resume that showcases some of the big names that you've worked with or have attended school at. Yeah. And it's, I know we're, I'm, at least I'm Lebanese, the, the whole WASTA thing. It doesn't have to be someone in your family. You can build a relationship with these people. When right. People, you know, email me on LinkedIn and just say, I want to grab coffee. Sure. I'll do it as many times as I want. Cause I, or as I can, because I was in their position and most people in corporate, they will give you that opportunity. You just have to ask. They're not going to reach out to you. I love that. It's asking, which is one of the, the hardest things for people to do. So I love that you, you're putting that one out there. Thank you. Well, looks like I think we're ending this because I think you answered every question we have. And I also don't want to be too, um, you know, taking too much of your time. But I really appreciate you being on here, Samad. And seriously, um, honestly, on behalf of the Network 1017, it really means a lot that you even took the time to just talk to us about this because I think there's a lot of Druze kids out there and Lebanese, whoever's listening to this, even if you're neither of those, um, you know, I know a lot of you out there are trying to apply for jobs and that's really important for you to kind of know how to excel in it. So thank you again, really. Thank you. And again, we don't have to stick to those couple jobs that our parents tell us, you know, Exactly. This is what you should do. And I, you know, to all the Drew's kids or Lebanese kids, or whoever is listening out there, I took a path that most of us don't take. So feel free to reach out to me and, you know, let's get us into a more diverse workforce. I love it. I love it. And one last thing, where can we find you? LinkedIn or where would you prefer the most? Um, mostly LinkedIn. Uh, <laughs> Instagram is, you know, has nothing to do with work. And <laughs> It's just pictures of my dog, so definitely LinkedIn. <laughs> okay, perfect. I'll make sure to put LinkedIn's uh, your LinkedIn link below when we when we post this. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. No problem. Thank you. All right. Stay tuned, guys, for the next interview. Bye.